What is a henchman? Time for a little history. Yeah, we don't just do writing tips about cartoon characters here. <laughs> the term henchman comes from the German word hingist, used in the late medieval period just post First Renaissance. The word literally means horse, and the term hengist man referred to a squire who attended a knight's horse. In modern times, this guy or gal is your villain's hype man. He's the one artist featured with that rapper you actually clicked on the video to see. But the truly good writers can make their henchmen steal the show. Now, as a side note, we need to take a quick look at how one defines a henchman. Here's my rule. If he functions on his own, he's not a henchman. Take Batman Begins. Scarecrow? Not a henchman. He's got his own plans going on, a scary mask, a degree in medicine, probably. Valcone? Not a henchman. Heck, you may see him as the main mover of the plot. He killed the guy who killed Bruce Wayne's parents. Now, we're going to take a short clip from the movie and see if you can spot the henchman. This guy, this guy's a henchman. All kinds of villains keep henchmen on staff for both physical and comedic support. Gaston totes around the sniveling LeFou. Frieza employs the flamboyant Ginyu Force. Joker is on again off again with the hammer hawking Harley Quinn. Each of these villains steal the show from time to time, but many a times the audience forgets them the second they leave the screen. However, there are a few henchmen that stand head and shoulders above the rest. If I'm being honest, there are three people vying for a place in this video, so I'll give a quick honorable mention to the two runners-up. Henchmen 21 and 24 from the Venture Brothers. <laughs> But now, on to the main attraction, Krunk. Yes, a character from a Disney movie with David Spade as an animated llama has one of the best henchmen ever. This is the part of the video where I'd normally give a bio on Krunk, but there's not much to say. He's big, he's bulky, and he was a junior woodchuck, or whatever their version of the Cub Scouts is, and that's it. The guy's got no past, no plans for the future, nothing. He does not function as a standalone character, and definitely shouldn't have his own movie. <clears throat> and definitely shouldn't have his own movie. This guy works because he's so simple, as a good henchman should be. He's not plotting vengeance or seeking higher power. He's just worried about spinach puffs, and that's fine. Even his deep internal conflict is just him sitting around with his good and evil conscience who'd rather make fun of each other than help him with any important decisions. Giving the henchman a needlessly complex backstory often takes away from the narrative you're trying to craft. So I only have two rules to writing henchmen. One, stay short and sweet. And two, have fun with them. This is the one chance as a writer you get to just go wild. So remember, if you can make a feature-length movie out of this henchman, you've failed. So don't make a feature-length movie out of a good henchman. How about dessert? Well, I suppose there's time for dessert. And coffee. Well, that's my two cents. Please, if you have anything to add, continue the conversation below.